Hades, developed by Supergiant Games, is one of 2020's best titles, and certainly one of the best music soundtracks in recent years. Darren Korb, the man behind the music, showcases his metal and hard rock influences such as Soundgarden, Megadeth, and Alice in Chains. I was blown away by the production quality of the score. The quality of the recordings, especially during the 2020 era, is still exceptional quality. This episode will analyze On the Coast, which is actually one of Darren's first attempts at writing for the orchestra. Please consider subscribing to Music Design below. By subscribing, you'll help grow this channel to reach more amazing composers like Darren. Thank you. An important clue behind On the Coast is that Darren collaborated with Austin Wintory on the arrangement and production. It's very interesting because you can almost hear both their styles infused in this piece of music. Regarding the basic overview, the song is made up of five sections, each sounding pretty distinct from one another. The time signature of this tune is mostly in 4-4 but it does switch to 6-8 in section 5. The instruments mainly come from the orchestral background. However, the main lead of the instrument is the English horn, which makes its appearance in most of the sections here. Strings also play a huge part, making up of the entire family of strings, violins, violas, cellos, and double bass. To round off the overall arrangement, Darren includes the flute and clarinet to double with the English horn. And then the rest of the instruments below serve in the background. On the Coast begins by opening up slowly in the lower stringed instruments in the key of C. They'll continue to hold on the C as a pedal tone for the English horn to solo on. It feels almost as if the player has just experienced a grueling battle and is now about to enter an illustrious paradise. The horn riffs upon the C minor harmonic scale, which gives off that Egyptian type of sound. Also notice the use of key switches I programmed here at the bottom. I go back and forth between the C sharp, which is no vibrato, and the C, which uses vibrato. I'll play some of this and notice the key switching between the two. Some other instruments accompany the English horn, the first starting with the solo violin. This violin sort of pops out of the soundscape with a tremolo G note. You can see the expressiveness automation hill I created here, which tells the instrument to fade in and fade out. And also here as well. Sticking with the violin, it'll continue the fade in and out until we hit around the halfway mark, where it eventually develops into this own counter melody with the English horn. So let's hear both of them together in this part. I find that the free vibrato of the solo violin complements the Egyptian sounding atmosphere the song is provoking. The final two instruments we haven't looked at are the timpani and the wind chimes. Timpani is sort of ominous to me, almost like we've stumbled upon a tribe of people who do not want us there. The chimes are no doubt influenced by many scores that are set in the Middle East or Egypt. But here they really tinkle the high frequencies and act as a great transitioner between sections. In section 2, the melody instruments switch from horn to solo cello, or second stringed instruments. As opposed to the sharpness and mysteriousness of the first section, here the song opens up to a more peaceful and awe-inspiring mood. What helps us out is the slow-moving legato nature of all the instruments. With the cello, for example, Almost all the notes are slowed together. Now what's interesting about section 2 is the switching of modulation between C and the half step up of C sharp. You can clearly hear in the second measure how the song sort of surprises you in the switch between C and C sharp. You may have noticed that the double basses have switched to pizzicato. This constant half note rhythm increases the driving force of the song, making it feel as if we're moving somewhere. 
A new instrument, the trombones, is an interesting addition. They provide further sustained counter lines for the cello. The trombones are excellently composed, as each of the three lines are given care to how they're composed with each other. Let's listen to them solo. ARP is quite intriguing. Looking at the piano bowl here, these top notes are my key switches. Switching the articulation between tremolo swells in this first part and standard tremolo. If we solo them, you can hear how they nicely flow together. The last instrument we have here in section 2 is the English horn, which returns but this time it plays trills. By slowly fading in and out of trilling, this prevents it from sounding too annoying, but lets it flow with the sustained notes of the other instruments. You can see the volume automation I created down here, how it follows a wave shape. One final transition here at the end of section 2 involves a cymbal slide and a timpani roll bringing us straight into the most illustrious section of On the Coast. Now let's take a listen to section 2 before we move on. Many of the previous instruments we discussed are enhanced in section 3. To illustrate the violins return with their tremolo, but are joined by a full ensemble of violins and violas as well. The English horn is now doubled by the flute and the clarinet, which further enhances the grandiose sound with all of them combined. The only aspect that does not change dynamically is the solo cello line and the trombones. The cellos return to the melody we've heard before, while the trombones further expand on their previous section. At the end of section 3, we see an awesome descend down in the strings, bringing us right into section 4. So let me play that for you here. Now I'll play for you section 3 in total. Sort of a calm after the storm section, section 4 dampens back some of the instruments before the conclusion. The English horn returns, this time returning back to its legato melody form. Notice the use of repetition in this melody, how it goes back and forth between this short C and C sharp trill. Having small motifs like this allows the listener to better anticipate what's coming next in the music. There is nice string movement between our three string lines, the violins, violas, and solo cello. What makes great string lines like these work is the constant movement between all three. Mostly none of these play exactly the same line or are doubled one for one. However, there are places that Darren does connect them for a few moments in certain places so that it doesn't feel too random.
Some additional percussive elements are added beneath, namely the snares and glockenspiel. The snares provide actually a militant vibe, but also act as a further driver of the rhythm. Glockenspiel simply highlights the chord progressions. Together they sound like this. So let's take a listen to section 4. Section 5 is such a unique piece of music. There are many great ideas we can uncover. Beginning up top with the violins, Darren brings back the tremolo, giving this section a magical type of feeling. Violas also play along with the violins. Solo cello, flute, clarinet, and harp are all linked together playing the same notes. What makes them distinguished from one another is the switching between the flute and the clarinet. This is called a call and answer melody, where one instrument begins a phrase and the other repeats it. This keeps this otherwise repetitious melody fresh and interesting to the listener. Our final instrument that is actually reserved only for this section is the vibraphone. By playing these sustained notes, it further contributes to a magical atmosphere as well as filling up some of the middle frequencies that might be missing if it wasn't there. Now let's hear this final section with all the instruments. It has been a great pleasure to discuss about Darren Korb's music behind Hades. The entire soundtrack really stands out in the forefront of the experience, and I greatly appreciate how he didn't hold anything back on exciting the player with his excellent music. Be sure to check out my interview with Darren Korb about how he composed for this song and the whole soundtrack of Hades. He shared many exciting tips and secrets that fans of Hades would find interesting. I'll post the link in the description below when it's released. If you would like to see this channel music design further grow and reach out to more amazing composers, consider supporting me on Patreon, and you can stay up to date on who will be featured next on music design. With that, I thank all my current Patreons for their kind generosity. Thank you all for watching and I hope to catch you in the next episode of music design.